is it appropriate that uh, First Nations rank around 67th on the UN Human Development Index when Canada ranks in the top seven? Is it appropriate that when Amnesty International released a report that said that there's a grave human rights crisis amongst First Nations in Canada, uh, is that appropriate? In 2011, when Sheila Fraser said that after 10 years of audits and over 30 uh, audits uh, specifically on, on Indian and Northern Affairs, that conditions were getting worse, is that appropriate? Uh, around the date when that report was released in December, I attended with a family who we went to the morgue to identify the body of, of their 16-year-old daughter, who was not just a, a, a life from a single family. This is now not only over 600 in a formal sense, but those that provide leadership and support for the murdered and missing Indigenous women of this country suggest that the number is over 2,000. The question is, is that appropriate? This is what our people are saying, that poverty is killing our people, that the history of, col of colonization and unilater unilateral action on the part of governments will stop now. The movement that is idle no more is standing up for the waters, for the rivers. They're saying that the unilateral actions that are, that are taking place under Bill C-45 and C-38 are not appropriate. We have a pattern in this country of blaming and finger pointing. We all of us have collected, you and I, and the Prime Minister and First Nations have inherited an Indian Act 100 years old that oversteps the treaty rights and relationship that the, that the Chief just spoke about. And we have yet to find a way to, to resolve these issues with Canada, as, as Chief Jody has been talking about. And so the time for that sort of uh, finger blaming and assassination of characters based on a deeply flawed process when Auditor General Sheila Fraser is important for the international media here to understand. Canada's Auditor General said to the government that there are accountability problems with the federal government's relationship with First Nations. There is no policy to support education. Mainstream Canadians have over 6% uh, uh, increases on an annual basis in education and on in health. Our people for 16 years have been under a 2% cap. We said we would be at a tipping point with the growth of our population exploding over half under the age of 25. That tipping point is now. We have arrived at the fork in the road. It's got one of two choices. The suggested easy road that people suggest, uh, the tinkering with the Indian Act and the overstepping of treaty rights and the ignoring of the plight of First Nations. Well, you cannot ignore what is happening with Idle No More. And we all of us are gripped by, the, by what's happening on Victoria Island with those hunger strikers. As I sit here, I'm deeply concerned about uh, not only tomorrow, but I'm deeply concerned about next week and the week after that, and about the relationship between First Nations and Canada. The, the road that we must take is a difficult one indeed. It's to accept that no longer can we only ask a single question about a single community and the state of affairs of their audit and their finances, but we've got to dig deep and say we're not going to allow this supposed complexity to stop us from transforming the lives of our people in this country, as well as bringing a sense of real reconciliation between First Nations and Canadians. I know you asked one single question, but you can see that your question relates to the broad relationship. That's why the call for fundamental transformation is now.